Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. I'm not in nobody's hurry. I, I dedicate, I dedicate everything to God, but I, I dedicate this this day to God. There is nothing I got to do, I got to run to, I need to go or do nothing but what I'm doing right now. And there's some of our problems is that we don't give God no time. We we want God to rush like a microwave. But there are some times that God wants to just let us kind of incubate and saturate in what He's doing for us and through us. Stop rushing, God. You don't have nothing to do. You ain't got nowhere to go. Stop rushing God. Give God a chance to minister to you. What have you been waiting for all week if you don't want God to minister? Hallelujah. You can't rush God. May not come when you want him, but he's always. On time, he's an on time God. In your Bible. In your Bibles, in the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, we're going to begin at the 11th verse, 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse through the 18th verse, again, 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verses 11 through 18, and it reads, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? 15. And what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he that believeth with the infidel? 16. What agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their people and they shall, I will be their God and they shall be my people. 17, here's where the word coming from. Wherefore, come out from among them. Be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 18, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Look at someone and say, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Oh, we live in a day and time where we live in a day and time where the church, we don't know who the church folks are from the world folks because everybody is looking the same. Everybody is talking the same. Everybody going to the same places and everybody doing the same thing. It's time that the people of God show a separation. We talk about a church and state. How about our believers and unbelievers? Oh, Everybody today want to say they're a Christian, but they want to do everything they want to do, how they want to do it, and when they want to do it. You are not your own, the Bible said, for we are bought with a price. We are no longer our own. I don't get to do what Collins want to do. Paul said, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul understood what a prisoner was. A prisoner has no rights. If you don't believe me, go down to the prison in your city. Go to the prison in your state. You think those guys are locked up, or women are locked up, or boys are locked up, or girls are locked up because they want to be? They get up when they say get up. They come out when they say they come out. You eat when they say eat. A prisoner. Paul said, I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. Therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said this morning, he said, Oh, ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. My heart is enlarged. Paul here in this letter to the Corinthian church is calling for a separation and a consecration of the people that belong to God. 
It's time out that we don't know the saints from the age. We don't know the believers from the unbelievers. It's time out that folks have to guess who you are. Have to wonder who you are. You talk the same language they talk. You said the same thing they say. So we can't even go by clothes and what we look like. Because some of us look some of us look worse than the world. Some of us, our dress, I don't know what we are. And, and mind you, I understand our clothes is not sanctified, but you ought not to look holy. I'm not talking about H O L Y either. Holy H O L E Y. Yes, yes. You all not look like the world. So Paul said, our mouth is open unto you. Paul is saying, I'm, I'm pleading with you. I'm, I'm calling to you. He said, ye are not straightened in us. Which that, that word straight in the Greek was speaking of that, that you're restricted. You, you're not restricted to us, but you are straight in your own bowels. Meaning that what is it that's causing this separation between you and I? You know what it is? I'm saved and you're not. I'm holy and you're not. You doing what the world does, and I do what God says. That's why people in church have a have a problem when people say they really love the Lord and that I'm holy. And they say, Well, you think you're something. No, I don't think I'm something. I just have my life guided by God. Well, you have your life guided by yourself. You do what you want to do. You say what you want to say. And then you want to say you're sanctified. Well, I tell you what sanctified is. Sanctified is separation and consecration to God. Sanctification is not the church you go to. All right. All right. When I go to the sanctified church, I do too. I'm in. All right. All right. All right. Matter of fact, I am the sanctified church. Look at me. This body that I am is the church, and my church is sanctified. My church is holy. Hello in the house. Y'all may go to a holy building, but you ain't holy. You may go to a sanctified church, but you ain't sanctified. What I love about God, if a man has not been changed from the inside out, not only are you not holy, but you ain't sanctified. Meaning that you're not set apart to God. Oh, my Nothing hard about sanctification. You either belong to God or you don't. Come out from among them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is them? We're going to get to them. Who is them? Paul said, now for a recompense in the same. I speak as unto my children, be ye also in law. Paul said, can you give me back what I give you? Paul told the Corinthian church, I loved you. My heart is open unto you. I love you with all that I have. Can you love me back like I love you? That's the problem with our churches now. Some folks are loving and some folks are not. The Bible said, by this shall all men know, if you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. Notice it did not say for another because anytime I have something for somebody, they can never get it. But anytime I have something to you, it's already yours. It's not based on whether you give me back or how you act or how you treat me. Hello in the house. So a whole lot of church going folks don't love Hello up in the house. Y'all don't have to go far. Everybody in glory bound don't love because everybody in glory bound is not saved. See, but I found out to make it real easy on yourself. You don't have to figure out who's saved and who love God. Those who love God show it. Folks that don't love God talk about it. You hear a lot of folk talking about God, talking about love, talking about what we should. But the folks that's doing it don't talk about it. They be about it. So you look at my life, you can tell I love God because my life short. All I see is your mouth moving. Come on, preacher. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, y'all might have wanted me to stay with the praise and worship now that I'm in it now. Don't bring me the words. You got it now. I'm in it. And I'm not going to get up off of it. Right, now, in 6 and 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I want to just get past this real quick. This ain't just talking about folks that's saved or unsaved. 
Well, I, I should marry someone in church or not. Well, let me let me let me help this out real quick. Let me do a little, little marriage one-on-one right quick. Listen. God does not let you fall in love if you love him with someone that don't love God. You just got your boyfriends and your girlfriends and your secret lovers and your secret amours and, and your, your, your ace boom coon and your whatever you call them. And you talk about you in love with somebody that don't love God. It's impossible for God to allow you to fall in love with someone that don't love him. God's not going to save your, your dirty man, your dirty woman, your dirty girlfriend or boyfriend just for you to marry him. How about God save them first, then you marry him? Let me tell you how God works. God don't take your dirt and clean it up and give it to you. God bring you something clean if you're already clean. Come out from among them. Why would God send me to unclean if I wash myself, if I clean myself, if I purified myself, if I made myself holy, and then God take me to an unsaved woman? God not going to send this saved man to an unsaved woman, and he's not going to send a saved woman to an unsaved man. Miss me with that. You don't love God, you love yourself. All of these church folks dating these unsaved folks, going out with these unsaved folks, in love with these unsaved folks. How do you love something that don't love God? Yeah, you're going to wish I stayed in worship. You're going to wish I was saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to wish I spoke in a tongue. Because now I'm talking about you. Come out from among them. Listen, I can't bring the world to the church if I'm going to the world. Come on. Come on now. Come on. And they can't be saved if I'm going to do what they do. All right. Hello, somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's tight, but it's right this morning. Uh, let, let, let's just all get it together. Let's all go get it together. Listen, let, let's go and deal with the livings and the live outs. Uh, you, you can't uh, unequally yoke, yeah, unequally yoke, yeah. You, you can't be shacking up. You you can't be living in the same house with your unmarried man and your un, un, unmarried woman and talking about you saved and you holy, you sanctified, and you love Jesus. I, you love something, but it ain't God. God not going to allow you to sit up and lay up and sleep up just like married folks and talk about you love God and the man you land on the side is not your husband and the woman you land on the side is not your wife. Come out from among them. The worldly folks do that. The heathens do that. The unbelievers do that. The folks that don't love God, that's what they do. They go and marry. They go and buy houses and not marry. Buy cars together and not marry. Get bank accounts together and not marry. Don't bother me this morning. Watch out, preacher. Come out from among them, church folks. The world can't get saved because we're too busy among them. Uh, the world won't come to church because you take the church to your job every day. You're not showing them who God is. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And when you think, when the Bible used that word yoked together, it talked about animals when they got ready to plow fields. And when animals got ready to plow fields, guess what you all? They gave animals of the same, of the same kind of the same kind. So two oxen, they wouldn't put an ox and a goat with the same yoke. They wouldn't put no ox and a pig yeah. yoke together. Right. Why not? Because they would, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed. Number one now, first of all, if two animals that's not the same can't walk together, how can two folks on two legs of peace walk together if they're not the same. All right. All right. Come on. Somehow or another, you all are trying to force God into your relationship and make God put together dirt that's not clean. Right. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, I'm going to take this a little bit further because now I'm going to get on the serious side of what we're talking about being yoked together. Being yoked together how? Even in fellowship. Mm. I may 
may work with folk that are unsaved. I may work with unbelievers. But it is not your job, not your responsibility, not your right for you to have fellowship. Fellowship implies participation. Every time I look up, your participation, your fellowship is with folks that don't love God. Your best friends are sinners. Your best friends are the world. Whether they're your family or not, unsaved is unsaved. They say, I can't hang out with them. Well, it's awful funny how the, the folks that don't love God and that are unsaved, they'll go with you everywhere. everywhere. Mm -hmm. church. But the church. Hello, somebody. When Sunday morning comes, hey, unbeliever, hey, sinner friend, will you go to church with me this morning? Not. But you'll run around with them all week. You'll go to their parties. You will hang out with them. You even take weeks vacation with them. They are unbelievers. But when you get back, they're not coming to church. Don't talk about God. You know it's wrong. You shack it up with that man and that woman. Come out from among them. That's why the church is having such a hard time drawing the world to God because we're just like them. Whew. Yeah, sometimes it don't make you feel good like this morning. Y'all wish I had another message. Y'all wish it was like last Sunday. Just do a praise and get up out of there. Thank you, God. I got you now. What communion, watch this. And what communion have light with darkness? You like darkness because your deeds are evil. You know how sometimes you start to find out and you see people, their best friends is crooks? <laughs> you tell me you're not a crook. You tell me uh, you're doing everything legally right. But all of your best friends, all of your hangouts is crooks and, and folks and thieving and, and robbers and all this kind of stuff. Those are your best companions. You can't tell me. <sighs> you running with a thief and you ain't stealing. Well, the problem is you're giving that stealer allowance because you're saying that you're in agreement with what he does because you hang out with him. Uh -oh. No, I don't. If you run with me and I'm a thief, then I might as well steal myself because guess what? Why run with a thief if I don't steal? Uh, let me get close to home now. Why, why run? Why run? Why run with a homemonger if you don't homemonger? Come on. That's it. Uh, help me somebody. Well, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why run with a fornicator if you don't fornicate? Why run with a liar if you don't? Why run with a thief? If, uh, I, I can do that without that. Why are you running with them? What light have to do with darkness? Paul is being very explicit about what he's saying. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Seek the Lord. Yeah. What concord have Christ with Belial? Yeah. Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? Watch this now. Mm -hmm. We got to understand that we can be unequally yoked in a lot of areas. Mm. Come on, come on. In our lives. There are some friends that you are attached to mm -hmm. that you are unequally yoked. There are some of you in the business world, you are attached to crooks. Mm. And you know they're crooks. You know they're doing evil. You know they're doing wrong. But you are, listen, I don't care who you are and what your name or title is. If you have a business partner that you know is working evil and crooked and corrupt and unlawful things, you're just as evil as that person and you say you love God. It's all about the money. So even in your business affairs, boy, I'm getting in your business. Even in your business affairs, you can be unequal to your. Well, I'm with this business partner. Watch this now. Your business partner does not have to love God. Your business partner just cannot be involved in unlawful things. Oh, I didn't say you couldn't be in business as in business as in business. But if your business is corrupt, yeah. illegal, wrong, money laundering, y'all know what I'm talking about. 
Believer, you're in the wrong business. All right. Come out from among them and be separated, say it. Oh, boy, it's getting in your business and everything. Idolatry. I can't be a part of your idolatry. You're still involved in that. I can't be a partaker of your sins. I can't be a part of your sinful pleasures. Uh, let me talk about it just a little bit. Your parties that you go to. Your ungodly parties that you go to. Your ungodly parties that you participate in. Trying to get, become a part of the business world. And, and I got to hang out with the boss. And I got to hang out with his friends. I got to go out hang out with their devilish parties. And I got to be involved in their sins to try to get up. If you was in Sunday school this morning. The Bible told us in Deuteronomy, uh, the 8th chapter, I believe, it talked about us, that God gives us power to get wealth. You don't need man to give you nothing. You don't have to be sinful. You don't have to do sinful things. You don't have to be wrong. You don't have to be lying. You don't have to steal. God said, I'll give you power to get wealth. He'll give you the ability uh, to make it right. You don't have to get with a thief just to get up. Stay with God. And let God work this thing out. Then Paul said here, he said, what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Y'all better listen, church folk. For ye are the temple of the who? Living God. For the Bible said, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, wherein I dwell. I got to be careful where I take God. Look at someone and say, you need to be careful where you take God. The question is, if God can't go, I can't go. I heard this all my life about church folk. I'm going to lay my religion down. You know what? You can lay a religion down because you can do something religiously and not do it. So you can lay your religion down and go do some evil and go do some wrong. But you can't lay God down and go do some wrong and come back and pick God up. You can't go lay down with that woman that's not your wife, that man that's not your husband, and do all that. So, well, God, I'm going to lay you down outside the door now. I'm going to go take care of my business. And when I get to, I'm going to come back and pick you up. Well, one thing about it, God can go there with you. And that last thing, God is going to be waiting for you to come back. Come out from among them and be separated. Some of y'all thought y'all was taking God to your demonology. And thought you're going to pick God back up after you got finished. Not so. Paul told the Corinthian church, don't get it twisted. There is no fellowship with light and with darkness. I'm almost done here, but I can't rush it because this is some good stuff. He said, and God said, I'll dwell in them. I'll walk in them. I'll be their God. And they shall be my people. So he said, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. And then he said, touch not. I believe there was another scripture that said, touch not, taste not. Mm -hmm. yep. Touch, don't touch it. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know touch is powerful? Come on. Come on. Yes, it is. Come on. Touch is powerful. Yes, it is. That's why we got so many sexual sins, because of touch. Yep. Can you talk about it on Sunday morning? I can talk about it. That's why we got so many sexual sins in church, because folks is touching. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I just touch? Can I just feel you? Can I just hug you? Can I just caress you? Can I just hold you? Can I just comfort you? Get out of here, devil. Amen. You're working with the senses that God gave us for the ability that we live by, but now you begin to use it for sinful nature. Touch not the unclean thing. And he said, I will receive you. Yeah. I'm going to pause here for a minute. I'm not, you all don't have to go to the scripture. But in the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter, verses 10 through 13. Y'all remember Achan? Y'all remember when Israel, God sent Israel out to war. And then Achan went out and got the accursed thing. He, he took something from that that they spoke to burn up and cursed and, and left it there. Achan stole it and he put it in the camp. Joshua 
Joshua, the seventh chapter. You got time to read it. And God began to tell Israel the reason they was losing the war, they was losing the battle, uh, is because they had put their curse thing among them. Watch me now, I'm calling somewhere now. How many of you have put the accursed thing in your house? You brought it in your house. You hang around the accursed thing. You drink the accursed thing. You handle the accursed thing. And you think God going to bless you. God told them, I cannot bless you because you have the accursed thing among you. If you want to be delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want to be made whole, look at somebody and say, get the accursed thing out of your house. Get the I, I tell you, some of y'all got some accursed folks living with you. Some of you, the reason your house is not blessed, you got the wrong folk in it. Look at somebody say, it's time to throw some folks out. Somebody ain't gonna like me, but I, I don't preach because you like me. I preach to tell the truth. You got some accursed stuff in your house, and you can't be blessed until you get rid of it. Let me read the Joshua 7, 12. It said, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. Watch this, what God said. Except ye destroy the accursed from among you. He said, sanctify the people, sanctify yourself. There was an accursed thing in the midst of you, and you can't beat your enemies until you take the accursed thing away. Amen. You better ask yourself, are you hanging out with cursed people? It's one thing for somebody to curse you out, but it's one thing for someone to be a curse. Oh, I come to a close. I'm coming to a close. Don't rush me. I'm getting right there. God says, now wherefore come out from among them. Be separate. Touch not. I'll be a father unto you. People of God, as I close, I give you this. God is saying the reason I can't bless you because there's something cursed among you. Whatever it is, mama, daddy, sister, brother, niece, nephew, uncle, cousin, grandma, grandpa, big bird, big sis, whatever their names are, you need to identify if something is a curse around you and the reason you're not receiving the blessings that God has prescribed for you is because there is something in the midst that does not belong. People of God, this is big right here. Do you not know you're being partaker of knowing someone's doing wrong? You're being friends and buddies with folks that you know is wrong that that's an accursed thing to you? That's that. You hanging out with folks that you know are crooked, know they're wrong, know they're doing unlawful things, and these are your friends, and this is who you hang out with. You love them. You say. What communion, what fellowship have light with darkness? So I encourage you today get rid of the accursed thing. So God can bless you. You don't have to look around and look at someone else. You don't have to look at yourself. Ask yourself the question this morning. Is there anything in my life or around me that's cursed? Lord, if it is, give me wisdom, give me knowledge, give me insight, give me vision to see that the relationship that I have is a curse. Mm. That my business partner that I'm in is a curse. And you may go to church with some of these folks and they can be a curse. But he said, have no fellowship. Have no fellowship with that that you know is wrong. God said, I can't bless wrong. And I can't bless you if you permit it in your life. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is right. 
You told us to come out from among them. Be ye separated, said the Lord. <laughs> so, Lord, I pray for your people. I pray that you would empower them to do the right thing. Sanctify yourselves. Separate yourself and be holy to the Lord. This we thank you for in Jesus' name. Who are out there in that land, God, in this, who's listening, who's seeing that is unsaved. You did all this so that you could save someone today. You could deliver someone today. You could set someone free today. You can detach yourself from the accursed thing. That's why the word said that he that is in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. That's what it means. Separation and consecration unto God. We pray that you do this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you and God keep you. As I pray on today that a word will say where you can move forward and put yourself in a blessed condition. It's all free time. www.glorybound.church send it in the mail or you can go online. But keep your commitment to God. Keep, if you can keep your commitment to God, God said, I'll keep my commitment to you. I'll take the little that you got and I'll make it a lot. The will that said, I'm going to eat this and die. And Elijah said, don't eat it and die. Give me some first. Yeah. And God multiplied that that she had. Because she gave to the man of God then. But now we're talking to the house of God today. As your purpose in your heart so deal, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love it, a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, I have an announcement to make concerning the church. This is Pastor Collins with Glory Bound Missionary Baptist Church, 1522, South Long Beach Boulevard, in the city of Compton, California, 90221. We will be going, entering in a 14-day fast on tomorrow. June 1st to June 14th, we will be using the Daniel fast, but we will be going for 14 days instead of 10, starting tonight at 12 a.m. Tonight at 12 a.m., we will start our Daniel fast 14 days. And prior to us coming back to the church inside of the building, we will, as God has 